I'm Milton Love. I'm a uh, research biologist at the Marine Science Institute, University of California, Santa Barbara. I became a marine biologist apparently at the age of six. My uh, father took me fishing on the Malibu Pier, and I remember we caught two shiner perch and a white croaker. And soon after, according to family lore, I declared I was going to be an ichthyologist, a fish biologist. And uh, I have so little imagination that uh, I never uh, changed my mind. My father, again, took me fishing on a sport fishing boat uh, out of Malibu. And we were fishing in about 250 feet of water. I was about 12. And we started catching rockfishes of various sorts. They came in like all different colors. And there was ones with stripes, and there was one with spots, and there was big long ones, and then there was fat stubby ones. And I was just blown away. We probably caught 15 different species in like an hour. And that the sheer diversity of that group blew me away then and it blows me away now. Uh, when I went to college, very briefly, I was a commercial fisherman. I kind of focused on rockfish. And then when I started graduate school, it was uh, natural to, to start working on uh, a group that I, I knew and loved. What's really interesting to me is that when I first started doing work on rockfishes, they were a valuable recreational and commercial fish, no question about it. But they weren't uh, like a top tier. And, and because of that, no one cared about them. Uh, their, their biology, no one cared how many of them there were. I couldn't get any funding to do my research. There was a period when I came back to UCSB, I, I did all of my research on rockfish at um, fish markets. I could go down and I could take their ear bones out and I can cut off their gonads and put them in sacks. So I did a, a major study on I think 17 species of, of rockfishes. So at that point, people began to acknowledge, oh, yeah, Milton knows something about rockfishes. So in my uh, long and God knows varied career, there have been several times when I've gone like, oh my God, this is fairly amazing uh, dealing with rockfishes. And, and the one that's the most amazing is when I started looking at the role that oil platforms off California play as habitat for fishes. Well, first of all, it turns out that rockfishes dominate the uh, populations around most oil platforms. It, it just happens that rockfishes dominate natural reefs in many, many cases. And, and a platform is just a very large, made of steel uh, reef. When we started doing our submersible studies, that was immediately evident. Was first of all, there was a lot of rockfishes. And, and second of all, that they tend to be bigger at uh, platforms that at natural reefs because there was less fishing there. And third of all, that platforms were better nursery grounds for many species of rockfish than on natural reefs, nearby natural reefs. For instance, back in 2002, there was a very, very heavy recruitment of very young Boccaccio and widows and things around oil platforms. We estimated how many baby Boccaccio there were around these platforms. If you had six platforms, which is what we studied, and there was a total of 420,000 baby Boccaccio. In that year, those six platforms could raise the entire adult population by about 1%. Why is this in the grander scheme of things of any interest? Well, platforms, most of them are no longer economical to operate. And eventually, something's gonna have to be done with them. So then the question is, well, what do you do with them? You can take them out. You could cut them below the water line where people can't see them and be offended. You could tip them over. A lot of things you can do. Well, one thing I think people should consider is that in some cases, these, these structures can aid in the recovery of overfished species or maintain the populations of heavily fished species. I, th I think that should be part of the, the equation when you're thinking about what to do.